I'm here today with the MiG-17 and I do want to talk a little bit about the MiG-17 wing design and its effects. Basically the Soviets found out that the MiG-15 was unstable uh, because it was the first experience with a sweat wing. It was a new experience for everybody in the 1940s and they were looking for ways to improve the stability. So one thing they did was take the MiG-15 wing and redesign it for the 17. One thing that they added was a double sweep. So you get this nice 49 degrees inner wing here and you get 45 degrees in the outer wing. Well that made the inner part of the wing uh, faster aerodynamically speaking and the less swept outer part was more stable. On top of that the Soviets made the leading edge of the inner wing sharp. So if we look at the edge it's sharp laminar design. And as we go out here where the 49 degree sweep ends and the beginning of 45 you can see the wing edge starts to round off. So the outer part of the wing is more rounded. As a matter of fact, if you look at this point, this edge point, it almost looks like there's damage here, a dent, but it's not, it's there by design. Also at this point where the 49 degree sweep ends, uh, a fence was added to prevent air flow from the inner wing to the outside part of the wing. And then there was another fence that was added at the outer part of the wing where it was fully rounded. Now that roundness with less sweep made the outside part of the wing more stable. Now how does that translate into flying? Well it means the outside part of the wing will stall last and the inner part of the wing will stall first. And when the inner part of the wing stalls first, you're stalling forward. If the outer part of the wing stalls first, then you're rolling. So being a pilot, you'd rather stall forward than roll. And this was a cheap, easy way for Soviets to redesign the 15 wing and make it more stable. You can achieve the same thing. Americans achieved the same with slats in the F-100 and F-4E. I believe, I believe F-86 also had some of it too. But designing something like slats and moving parts, all that adds cost, adds maintenance. And Soviets usually chose simplicity, something more rugged, and something that didn't need maintenance. I'll go into stalls more specifically when I'm talking about the 17 module. The 17 module does have the real 17 dynamic stalls. But here I hope I showed a little bit of the insight into Soviet wing design mentality, and especially during the late 1940s and early 50s. Now that I talked about the wing, let's talk about the stalls in the MiG-17 because even though it has a better designed wing, it, it will still roll to one side or the other uh, in some cases. I'm going to break down the MiG-17 stalls in four categories. You have your normal forward stall that happens under slow speeds when you coordinate it. Then you have your auto roll. This is when one of the wings stalls and it will flip you over or roll you. Uh, and this happens under even under slow speeds if you are uncoordinated and I'll show that in, in, in the next video then you have the accelerated stall at higher speeds which is an auto roll it will literally roll you over and kind of flip you around if done at higher altitudes it's not a big deal but if you're dogfighting you, you likely just lost the fight and then you have your stalls that become spins and I'm not going to cover that today that's to be implemented in, in a little bit so let's talk about the first stall this is a forward stall. This is what the MiG-17 pilots talk about. Right here, I'm slowing down 2,000 meters. 7,000 RPMs. You do not want to be under 7,000 RPMs in a MiG-17. So I'm just going to keep pulling back, pulling back, and let the nose stall, and the nose falls forward. You have to be very careful when recovering. You don't want a secondary stall, but eventually you'll recover. In these circumstances, the MiG-17 will lose about 550, 600 meters, about 2,000 feet. So yeah, you do lose quite a lot of altitude, but it's what they call a mild stall. Over here, I lost about 620 meters, so it's right within that range. Now, the next stall I'm going to talk about is, I'm going to show two of these. This is a slow speed, but uncoordinated. So what I'm doing here, I'm pretending I'm doing flat scissors. So I'm actually adding right rudder. You can see the ball is moving. Now, the airplane will talk to you here. It will start shaking and the first thing that you'll notice is it will stop turning and then you'll see the nose starting to swing the opposite way. When that happens, that's a pre-stall condition over here. I just kind of get into it and release it and I still recover from it. If you release it earlier, it's not a problem. You can just continue flying. Now, what happens if I keep pulling 
during when that nose starts yawing to the opposite side you can see in this next case I'm just gonna keep pulling pulling the nose completely yaws and it's gonna roll me over flip me over and when it flips you over if you're low you're not gonna get out of it that's the auto roll now the second case where the auto rolls happen are when it's a high-speed accelerated stall above Mach 0.4 so in this case what I'm doing I'm pretending to do a dog fight I'm chasing the guy I'm trying to turn on him turning 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 and I'm 650 kilometers per hour I'm pulling and it's 600 I stall and you can just see it loses control it just flips over about 720 degrees or so if you're at higher altitude it's not dangerous it'll recover but you will likely lose the dog fight uh, because you just lost all your airspeed and you just uh, departed Now the violence of the roll depends on the speed. So here I'm showing a second case where I'm actually going to stall at about 550 kilometers per hour or so. And you can see it rolled, but it didn't roll as much. It didn't roll like two times, about one and a half. So it just depends on the speed. It's dynamic, how fast you're going, at what, at what speed you're stalling. But the MiG-17 will stall from 700 kilometers per hour all the way down to 200 kilometers per hour. It will stall throughout the full range you have to be careful with that stick uh, and you have to get the feedback for the airplane we've added a lot of feedback on the airplane to where it's shaking it's talking to you the nose is yawing so pay attention to those things there is no AOA indicator but uh, we have made the airplane talk back to you exaggerate it a little bit just so the pilot gets that feedback in, in, in the simulator and gets that real-life experience something the pilot would feel rather than see but in a simulation we had to exaggerate it a little bit so that airplane talks back to you and you get a real real life experience in the MiG-17. Lastly I'm just showing a landing here. I've shown this before a couple of times if you fly it by the numbers the MiG-17 will kind of fly itself if you don't and you get out of control you're not gonna make it so over here it looks a little bit shallower than it is because of the VR but I'm right at 270 kilometers per hour I got about 8,500 RPMs I'm moving the RPMs there and here and there to, to keep me on that glide slope but I'm basically maintaining that all the way down over the runway just pull it back and let the airplane settle on the center line keep that nose up a little bit then let the nose drop and that's basically it that's the stalls in MiG-17 other things that I haven't shown is that you can actually exaggerate the stalls if you use your ailerons if you use your ailerons during a stall you can make that stall a lot worse at higher altitudes it's gonna stall worse at 45,000 feet if you stall it you're not gonna recover for about 10,000 feet so the stalls in this mix 17 module are realistic they're dynamic they change throughout the altitudes they change with your flap settings they change with your speed it is something that's gonna take a little bit to get used to it even after flying it for a while uh, sometimes I, I'll over push it but it, 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 once you get the hang of it it, it, it's really a pleasure to fly and it's one of those airplanes you have to fly by the numbers if you pass that edge the MIG will make you pay for it hope you like this video hope you enjoyed them I hope you learned something so take care and and we'll talk to you again soon